Did you know there is more to keyword research than just finding out how much competition there is and if something's a long tail keyword? And I'm going to share with you today an Etsy SEO tool that can really up your game for 2021. And this, of course, is an eRank tool. If you don't know, I also work for eRank, but my videos are not affiliated or sponsored by eRank in any way. Everything on here is my own opinions. So I'll be using my eRank Pro subscription to show you this. You can get all of what I'm showing in the basic subscription and much of what I'm showing is in the free account as well, although you do get more details in the paid subscription. Now this tool I'm talking about is the keyword tool. You can get to it either with this shortcut button here, the keyword tool, or it's in tools keyword tool. Now it can help when you're doing your keyword research initially to start with a really broad keyword to get some ideas and then narrow down focus. So we're going to hit up one of my favorites, ring. So you just pop the term that you want into the search bar here, hit search and off it'll go. You can also, the, the drop down at the side, you can see your previous searches, but we're just one. Let's look at ring. So firstly, we see the data that you see on a lot of pages. It tells us the average searches and hover over these questions question marks if you're not sure. So it's the average searches of people in the US based on the 12, last 12 months. Average clicks is of these 29,000 people, how many of them actually clicked on a listing they saw in that search. The click through rate here is just a proportion. What what proportion of the people that saw the stuff actually clicked on it? And it's around 50%, which makes sense. Nearly 30,000 and nearly 15,000. And the competition is an idea of how many listings there are on Etsy for this. So this is a great place to start with a new keyword, especially if you're looking and seeing things like the competition telling you how many listings there are might be a little more difficult to rank for something. But again, we're also looking how many people are searching. If nobody's searching, no one can see you. And the click through rate, the searches and the click through rate give you an idea of what we call buyer intent. So this means if they're searching, do they see what they're looking for? Do they click on some of the items and possibly buy? Or do they not see what they want? It's too vague, it's too broad a term. So in this case, about a 51% click-through rate. That's actually higher than I would think for such a broad keyword. Doesn't mean it's a good keyword, but it gives us some data here. And we can see the search trend here, just of the US in the past 15 months. And we can see for the term ring over the past 15 months with, with a wobble, but this has definitely been on an upward trend. So if you're a jewellery maker, rings aren't looking too bad at all just now. And then on the right hand side here, here is some excellent new data. It's in beta, as it says, with this little orange thing, but it's shown as the other countries where we found buyers searching for this phrase. So not all countries are covered, but hopefully it's a bit of usefulness. So it's telling us that for all the people that were searching for ring on Etsy, around 45% of them were th from the US. But if you're selling in another country, if you're either from another country or you've opened up and you're selling to other countries, this gives you an idea of some of the rest of the market that's out there. For example, United Kingdom and Canada add another nearly 30% of people onto your potential market. So if you were thinking of selling rings, then if you can add shipping to the United Kingdom and Canada, then you've increased your say, you've increased your possible customers. And also bear in mind, because Etsy is so much bigger in the United States, the number of people that actually ship to these other places might be smaller, so you might have a better chance. So this looks like it's a keyword that's searched around the world, which makes sense. Most cultures wear rings. Let's have a look down at some of the other data here. So search results analysis. Now what this does, everything else here, what is happening is eRank is looking at the listings, the top 100 listings that are ranking for the keyword that we put in. So it's looking at the top 100 listings that are ranking for the keyword 
ring. Now, where it, now why it tells us listings analysed here is 100, because some keywords do not have 100 listings to analyse, so it basically will tell you if there's less. But if you're looking at something that it's likely there's going to be a competition of more than 100. For these 100 top ranking listings, it gives you some really cool information here. This lets you know if your item is likely to be able to fit into this category. First thing we're looking at, the average pack price. Now, if your ring is a beautiful handmade in luxury materials wedding ring or something, and you're looking and you're saying the average price of the top 100 listings is $15, Hmm, maybe I want to be more specific with my keywords. Maybe people who are searching for ring are looking for something a bit cheaper. So then we have the average hearts for each of these listings analysed, the total number of views for these listings, and then the average views across the 100 listings and the average daily views. So this gives you an idea as well, not just with the click-through rate, but what what number in the top 100, how often are they getting viewed? If it's a lowish number, like half a view a day, roughly, then then we might be able to say perhaps the commercial intent isn't great, they're not particularly busy, but it also might tell us if we're a smaller shop and we're saying, well, I could maybe drive more than half a view a day, so I could maybe appear in this search for having a reasonable listing. So it depends if you're looking to sell a high volume, a low average daily views might tell you there's not a whole load of actual customers looking at these listings. Equally, if you're seeing that the average daily views is high for a keyword that has a low search volume, then that might tell you that people are being seen for other keywords. There might be other superstar keywords in their title and their tags. So they're not getting seen for the keyword that you've looked for, but there might be some others if we dig deeper. So there's a handy bit here, the most popular categories. This is just telling you of those 100 listings analysed, what categories are they in? And in this case, it's interesting because the top category, 80% of the listings that rank for ring are under ring dishes. So perhaps when people are searching for ring, they're not actually wanting to buy a ring, they're looking to buy things to go with a ring. But it can give you an idea for a more descriptive keyword. It might give you some ideas where you can list them. Don't spend too much time thinking about categories, but it's cool to see. And we have the most popular tags word cloud. So this is for the 100 listings that have been analysed, what tags do they have? And the bigger the letters, the more of the top 100 listings contain these tags. So Ring Dish is really big here. So for the top 100 listings ranking for the word ring, most of them have the tag Ring Dish somewhere in their listing. So that really is telling us that Ring Dish is popular. <laughs> here. And again, this nice orange warning, we see this in lots of places, just to make sure whatever you're looking for isn't trademarked. You can search for Disney all you like, buyers can search for Disney all they like, but you don't want to be using these trademarked items, these trademarked tags, unless you know you're allowed to. As they say, don't mess with the mouse, but don't mess with anyone. If it's trademarked, copyrighted, somebody else's intellectual property, you can't make a listing with it. And there's even a link to the United States trademark database. So you can have a look, if, especially if you're selling in the United States. But make sure whatever you want to be selling is legal wherever you're selling it. And further down here, we have keyword ideas. Like in most places, there's a little filter if you want to look for certain things like dish. If I start typing in dish, it's going to show me everything that contains the word dish as well here. So you can filter more to get better ideas. But when we have a look here, you can choose how many rows per page. We're only seeing 10 just now, but from the drop, drop down, you can see different numbers if you want to see more of them at once. This is just keeping the page nice and tidy. And we get a look. The tag occurrences is, again, in the top 100 listings ranking for ring, how many of them also have the tag ring dish? Well, 44 of them have that tag. 
and ring holder again 19 of them have that tag so that's kind of telling me that the top listings ranking for the word ring are not rings they're dishes, they're a wedding ring dish, they're ring size, sizers, they're things to do with rings rather than necessarily rings. And we have again here the average searches, clicks, click through rate, competition and even a little search trend graph. This is one of the places where if you have a free account you won't see so much data so if you want to see the average searches you're going to have to search individually for each of these terms if you wanted to find out what the average search is in is. But in the subscriptions I can see them all here so the data is available to everyone it's just a little bit easier if you have a subscription. One thing I really like here is the little search trend graph because that tells us if our keywords are seasonal or if they're just a flash in the pan like if we look at the ring gauge here there's only one peak in the same ring plate they've only really got one peak and then nothing for the rest of the year so that tells me that's probably not a great tag to use it's probably not a great keyword whereas others like nose ring are common all through the year and ring as we saw is increasing just now so it's handy to see what the trends are over time to see if it really is worthwhile and we have extra data here the number of pinterest searches this is handy if you're trying to build your brand through pinterest as well and also pinterest drives a whole load of traffic so if something's popular like nose ring is massive just now on pinterest but hmm, not the biggest competition ever so perhaps nose ring is something to watch same google searches and the competition cost per click this is telling you the prices of adverts so especially if your shop's in that category that you're paying for etsy off-site ads it can be good to know this but it also tells us buyer intent when a cost per click is high, then that suggests that people are willing to pay a lot to advertise here. And if they're paying a lot, then that means that they're hopefully selling a lot. So good to know, Google. Long tail keywords, I wouldn't focus too much on this. It's just a nice little metric that is really looking at how much are people searching and are we thinking if... And are we thinking the lower searching, for example, custom ring dish is more specific a keyword. So if someone searches for that, they know what it is they're searching for and are hopefully more likely to buy. And we can see custom ring dish has an 80% click through rate and ring gauge had a 100% click through rate. So it's really cool. So, so it can be handy to get an idea. Are the people searching actually interested in what they're searching for? And again, the price ranges here, we saw what the average price is, but what is the ranges? And we can see, for example, the higher price things, just one or two listings at the higher prices, whereas there's quite a lot at a cheaper price. Useful again here is processing times. We're looking and seeing that most of the listings have a one to three days processing time. They're all fairly quick so this means they're ready made rather than custom made. Although sometimes standing out as, as different isn't a bad thing, it's good to know what the rest of the competition is like. This can also give you an idea of what expectations a buyer has when they're searching for this term. And we have a little synonyms section here. This has given you different words that you could use. I have spoke many times before that I used to use custom for my custom made items all the time. But I discovered also that personalised is a really popular synonym to use. Although this is just a tool and obviously the word ring in in english words can be used for many different things so it can also mean call telephone um sound gang all sorts of things but we could look and see if there's any any synonyms that would work for what we're searching for and if you were doing earrings hoop is also a useful synonym so you can check but there isn't necessarily going to be something there depending on your keywords and this final section shows the top listings again so you can visually see what everybody's up to here you can visually see what the top listings for the search term ring are so you can get an idea of what everything looks like you can see would my photography stand out well amongst this how good are these listings what titles are they using what tags are they using and again there is more data how old is the listing because we know that new listings get a little boost in search so if they're fairly brand new listings they might not be the best listing but they're getting a little bump while Etsy's gathering some data about them 
and also it tells you if you've got quite a few new listings showing on the front page it might say that there's a chance that your new listing could show up there again this is the total views for the listing and wow 40,000 total views now it is likely when we're looking at this we know there's not that many searches for the word ring so it is likely that some of these views are coming from other places so there's a lot of tags body jewelry we would have to look into these to see if these are any good but also it can happen that if someone has a large following on social media they can get a lot of views that aren't even from search but it's good to know if there's a lot of daily views then it's possible there's a good buyer intent for this kind of item and a quick note when we look for slightly broader keyword terms some of the results might be a little bit different for example when i search for a custom dog portrait really only the united states is searching for that so if that's an important term for me then it's likely i'm going to want to be trying to sell to the united states and not focus on other markets and it's possible that you can search for something like this Samoyed sculpture that there are no search data found for this keyword nobody's searching for it so the area of the graphs here is collapsed but we still do get some analysis because there are some listings so it's found 52 competition here and only able to analyze this 52 so we can still look into what people are doing so if you get this don't be disheartened and say oh no this is totally no good because we still get some idea of those 52 what other keywords are they using so just samoid could be a useful term felted samoid samoid dog so i get some more ideas here of perhaps Instead of just what I was looking for, I might get different ideas for tags. And I also wanted to quickly point out as well, in the tag occurrences, if there's no, if there's no tag occurrences showing here, what this is, these are keywords that buyers are also searching for. So instead of being tags that are in the top 100, these are actually keywords further down. This gives you some this, this can give you an idea of what buyers are looking for. So this is also super interesting. Some of them might not be relevant, but yeah, pet sculpture instead of Samoyed sculpture. OK, but yeah, it's not great with a it's not great with the search trend, but there's always some ideas here. And you will see there's a quota here in my pro account. I've got 200 lookups a day. Your quotas reset at midnight Eastern Standard Time. And again, dog portrait digital, nobody's searching for it. But will you look at that? There's a huge amount of competition. So it's good to dig deep into this. So dog portrait digital isn't show isn't great, but custom pet portrait, custom dog portrait. There's lots of keywords that could be useful. I hope this helps you dig more into what the competition is like for your items before you jump into a keyword. There's way more than just the competition and how many people are searching. We also want to look at who we're going to be competing against. And the keyword tool is really helpful to be able to do that. So I'm Pam Duffy. I'm here to help you craft your career with creative marketing and artistic inspiration. Don't forget, hit like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and come back often for more videos.